Hey, it's Ron from RDS, and I'm here at Studio 4 uh, mixing the new track uh, from Super Unknown. We did a cover of Rusty Cage, and today I'm going to discuss how we're using the SSL 4000E uh, console as part of the mixing process, in addition with some uh, really sweet outboard. So if you look at Pro Tools, we have two sides. We have the original recordings on the left, and then on the right, we have returns coming uh, back from the console. So I've essentially taken the outputs and fed them channel by channel into the console down here. We have 14 tracks. Uh, uh, it's like 10 channels of drums, bass, two guitars, and vocals. So coming out of Pro Tools, track for track, into the desk. And what I'm gonna start with is by just getting the best sound with faders and panning in the returns back here in Pro Tools. So after it comes into the desk, it takes it direct out back through the converters into Pro Tools right here where it's returning. So we have input monitoring enabled. So when I hit play, we're hearing the round trip. So let's take a listen. Okay, so that is where we're at right now. And as you can see, all the faders and Pro Tools are at Unity. The only thing that I've done in the returns is set up the, uh, the pans of where I want things in the image. So I'm essentially able to kind of mix from the desk into Pro Tools to re-record the levels that I actually want coming back in. And that's like a really good starting point. So when I get back into Pro Tools and I'm doing automation, that we're basically re-recording at you know at levels that are sitting really well in the mix. Um, let's talk about the uh, the channel strip here. First thing it's going to come in and do before I even hit any of the EQ, it's hitting this line input. There's a transformer in there that just adds that signature analog sound. And moving straight down, we have um, the compressor here. We also have the gates right here and downward expanders. Um, both of which can be sidechained. And then we're getting into the uh, holy grail of all of the SSL EQs, the 4000E. Uh, this is the first edition, 1982, with the brown EQs. It's the, you know, pretty much every plugin that you get, whether it be Waves or Universal Audio, that emulates the 4000 is actually this console and this EQ strip. So here's the EQ section in which we could, um, you know, if we were using an insert in the path, we can determine... Uh, whether we want it pre or post EQ from here. Um, and the cool thing about these old SSLs and even with the, some of the newer ones that you can hit this monitor button and if I was like recording and I wanted to hear what the EQ would sound like, I could engage that and it would not commit it. It would just feed it into the monitor, pa monitor path. But what we're doing is we're actually committing this back into Pro Tools to utilize all this analog. Now this next section, this is traditionally the aux sections where we have four different aux ends that go to uh, the various outboard that we'll be using for effects. Up here, the Q section, this was what would normally go to a headphone mix back in the day. And up top would be your pan of whatever channel you're sending out, and then the level would be here. But what Phil Niccolo has taught me is to use these, especially on drums, where I'm going to send out I'll find the panning of like the rack tom and match it with where I have it in the stereo field and Pro Tools. Same thing with like the overheads. And then this is my send, the output. So I can then come out of the patch bay from this output into the two distressors that are on the bottom. And what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna be able to print a parallel compression uh, drum track uh, in tandem with the uh, individual multi-tracks that are being processed in the vet, in the desk. Uh, a couple of other things that we're going to use today. We're going to use this one pull tech uh, for the vocal chain. The vocal chain today will go from here. We used the black 1176 uh, during tracking. Uh, so I'll probably come out of this and either go into a distressor or this blue stripe for some saturation. And then on the desk itself, I usually like to throw in the, uh, the compressor. It's on the desk as a little bit of a, of a chef's kiss, per se. Uh, the bass I'm running through the other pull tech into a distressor. Uh, we use these two uh, distressors for drums. 
I'm gonna use this AMS reverb for uh, the vocal reverb and uh, probably this for the delay. So this is some of the outboard that is kind of like, there's like predetermined things that I'm always gonna to go to. This is another great unit that I like to use for vocal effects, this DC-30 for an excellent like slap vocal. Um, and then once it's back in the board, uh, we'll print the stems and then go back into Pro Tools for any additional processing.